talk. This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the final district development session of this Rotary year. Um, for those of you who haven't met me, I'm Una Martone. I'm serving as your district trainer. And it has been a pleasure to, to work with you in this capacity the past year. Um, kudos to District Governor John Anthony for um, putting something unique together in a really unique year. So I think probably more people have participated in training this way than they have in a traditional year when we got together for you know, different public relations training seminars and different membership seminars. So I, I did hear from Greg Staub that he wants to continue this into the um, new Rotary year. So stay tuned to the district website for more information on upcoming trainings. So for tonight, it's the color code. And I hope everyone has had the opportunity to take the color code personality assessment. We sent the link out via email. And if you haven't done so, it's, huh? it's oh, okay. It's right? not gonna take yeah, so just a to whole lot away from you, but if you haven't, maybe try to do it afterwards. And I will try to mute audio if there's a lot of background noises. If, if um, you don't mind muting your own audio, it would be helpful. But I'm going to try to keep an eye on, on it and help mute the audio just to avoid background noises. As I mentioned, you can feel free to unmute your audio to ask a question and um, participate as, as you see fit. So I'll start by asking a question to you before I bring up the PowerPoint slide deck. Was anyone surprised by the results they got from this personality assessment? Any surprises out there? A couple of surprises I see. Maybe a little bit of surprise. Maybe that's a statement to show how well you know yourselves already. <laughs> And that's, and that's a great thing. This, this personality assessment, the color code is designed for two reasons. And one is to help you understand yourself. But number two is to really help you understand the people around you. And in Rotary, sometimes we're put together very quickly with a group of people that we might not know very well, or we might only know on the surface. And so um, learning uh, through the color code, learning the colors of other people can be really helpful and um, in helping us form and gel as teams in Rotary. Um, has anyone ever heard of Project Aristotle? It was done by Google. No, I'm... I'm not seeing any, any positive response to that, but you can look it up. It's called Project Aristotle. It was done by Google. They researched what makes highest performing teams. And what they found was psychological safety and trust is the number one factor of high performing teams. So how do you build psychological safety and trust among your team is getting to know one another. So getting to know one, of, one another better through the color code is a tool that can help you all build psychological safety and trust to have the highest performing teams. Um, some people are saying they were surprised that it reflects your personality so well. And then um, some seem to, the answers seem to be all over the place, but yet it still pegged you so well. So thank you for those, those insights. So let me pull up my slide deck. Just give me one second here. And let's go to All right, are the slides up? Are you seeing the slides well? Okay, here we go. As I mentioned, the color code helps to build self-awareness. This this is not only understanding your own um, strengths and your limitations, but it's understanding the impact you have on other people. That's, that's the second part of self-awareness that most people overlook. Yes, they know what they're good at, or, you know, they know their talents or their purpose, 
but yet not thinking about how you impact other people um, can still be a lack of self-awareness. So, so this helps in your understanding when you walk into a room, are you bringing the room up or are you bringing the room down? So that part of self-awareness will come out in this color code training. And the second part is helping to develop empathy. And empathy, we talked about this at our Rotary Club meeting today with president of Messiah University, Kim Phipps. Um, you know, empathy is not taught in school. It's something that we, we continue to develop even as we are adults. Helping, uh, helping to understand another person's condition, being able to put yourself in that other person's shoes. And, and the color code really, really helps with that because once you understand where the other person is coming from, you can maximize that relationship. You can correspond and interact with that person, um, how that person will respond best and most favorably. So yes, there's getting some, some more comments on here that um, very different responses, Adeline, if you are answering as an adult or a child. And, and that really is the core of this particular assessment. Um, the color code is, let me get to my next slide. The color code is a tool for maximizing relationships. It's not like any other tool I've ever participated in. You know, even like the DISC um, test or the strength finder and some of those other things measure your behaviors but behaviors change we change as we grow we we change when we learn and we certainly change in in different situations the color code measures your driving for motivation that's why you take the test from the perspective as a child once you know your driving core motivation technically it doesn't change. Your driving core motivation is innate. You're born with it. It's why you can talk to a set of identical twins, but their personalities are different because each person is born with their own personality, um, even if they're identical twins. This is not my model. It was created by Dr. Taylor Hartman. He has a master's in counseling. Um, he's an author. He's also a therapist and he, he developed this model based on what he was seeing in, in therapy sessions. As I'm mentioning where you see the arrow up toward the top of the ladder, where it talks about behaviors, that's where most personality assessments and most strengths finders are. They're talking about behaviors, but look where Dr. Hartman developed this deep, deep down um, into your core is where, is where the color code com comes from. So this is not surface level. This is not what you see. You might see people in your Rotary Club acting a certain way and you might come to a conclusion or an assessment about that person based on their behaviors. But, but the reason, the why behind their behaviors is what we really need to understand. That's where the empathy comes in. Why are people doing what they're doing? So that's what we're gonna dig into today. Someone said they didn't get their results. Uh, John Cram, PDG. John, the, the results are usually instant. So there could have, you could have entered an error in your email address perhaps, but usually right when you take the test, you get your, your, your responses right away. Um, if you want to take it even while we're on the call, you could possibly um, get that or let's see, <laughs> John make an error. <laughs> yeah, you do have to fill out demographic information, but I can tell you they will not start to hound you. They don't start giving you junk email. Don't worry. Um, I've, I've done this a lot of different times. So John, I hope you will be able to retake the test and I'm gonna move on. Hopefully you can take notes and um, even learn though you don't have your results right at hand. All right. I think as far as the chats are going, I think I'm gonna go through the material 
I hate to keep stopping for the chat. So I'll ask you if you have a question or you want me to stop, if you could unmute yourself, um, just because I don't think I can keep managing the chat functions and, and go through the materials at the same time. So unmute yourself if you want me to stop or if you have a question or, or want to contribute. All right, these are the four driving core motivations as assessed and created by Dr. Taylor Hartman. Red driving core motivation is power, blue is intimacy, white is peace, and yellow is fun. And just looking at the people on the call, I can see that we have a wide variety of colors by the t-shirts that, that you're wearing. It's important to know every color has strengths and every color has limitations. There are no colors that are better than any other colors. Um, there are no colors that are only specific to a certain job or another certain job. Um, it's just important to know that all of these colors have value, just like all people um, have value. So don't, don't, don't think, oh, this color is better than the other one. All of these colors are great. All of them have strengths and all of the colors have limitations. It's also important to note that once you know another person's color, it is 100% up to you to adapt to their color, not to sit back and say, oh, well, you know I'm a red, you didn't approach me as a red, so we're not gonna get along. That's the empathy part. The empathy is once you know the other person's color, you approach them in a way that you'll get the best results because of what you know about their color. Does that make sense? You can't sit back and expect people to adapt to you. Now, if everybody was doing that, we would all get along just fine, wouldn't we? If we were all that concerned about the, the other person's color and their driving core motivation. Doesn't quite happen that way, but we can maybe make a little difference here at Rotary. So this is the demographic breakdown of colors. And this is um, from the United States, no significant gender differences, as you can see. 25% of the population that has been tested would typically test red, 35% blue, and 20% evenly for white and yellow. So if you relate to one of your colors, you can see how you stack up with the rest of the population. So we're gonna start with reds and what we're gonna do is go through each color. I'll spend um, a few minutes on each color. So I'll go, I'll go red, blue, white, and then yellow. And then at the end, I'll talk a little bit about how the colors all get along together. And I'm gonna go through pretty, pretty rapidly. If anybody wants more information, you can get to me maybe at the end or send me an email for a later time. So this is a quote from Dr. Hartman. Healthy reds are the lifeblood of humanity. They are the movers and shakers of society. So what is the key word in that sentence? Somebody tell me the one key word. Life healthy. 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 Was that Rob who said that? I, I said movers. I don't know. Okay. I heard someone say healthy. 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 MJ. Healthy. That is the key word. And Dr. Hartman's um, uh, description, healthy of any color is when you're living in your strengths. And sick in any color is when you're living in your limitations. So healthy reds, um, according to Dr. Hartman, are the movers and shakers of society. Reds have natural talents of leadership and vision, okay? That doesn't mean that the rest of us can't be leaders or that we don't have vision. It just means that it comes to reds naturally. They don't even have to think about it. They, they are automatically bent toward a, a leadership disposition. So if you have reds in your Rotary Club, 
even if they're young or even if they're new Rotarians, give them some responsibility. They want to lead and they are naturally um, made to be in a leadership position. Red strengths include responsibility, focus, confidence, leadership, and proactivity. I can tell you that reds are, are decisive. They can, they can um, think about how to get from A to B uh, very quickly. They're, they're not necessarily as much concerned about who gets in the way sometimes when they're going from A to B, but they can, they can see that. They have this vision of how to get to the, to the success. They're, they're project driven. They, they get really excited and really involved in a project and, and they're moving that project forward, moving that project along um, with, with determination and with a lot of decisiveness. Reds at the same time can be selfish. They can be insensitive and arrogant. They believe that they're always right and they can be impatient. I see some reds over here <laughs> maybe shaking their heads. Remember, all the colors have limitations. So, so the reason reds don't want to hurt your feelings. Let's just, let's just make that statement very clear. They don't want to hurt your feelings. They are simply thinking of the task at hand. So if you feel like you know, you're, you're being railroaded or if you feel like this person isn't listening to you, it's because they are so focused on the task and they know how to get there. They can see it with their vision. And so sometimes they forget to, they forget about the people they forget to incorporate people and and rotary if nothing else is a people proposition so for all the reds out there remember that you're dealing with people not only dealing with with projects this is a need and let's just distinguish uh, i'm going to go over the needs and wants of each color reds need to look good technically need. They don't want to look good technically. They need to look good technically. It's hardwired in them to look good technically. That's the part about they always believe that they're right. That's a need that's born into them. They need to be right. They need to be respected. And they need to obtain approval from a select few. And, and the select few, when it comes to the Reds, are people who they respect. If a red respects you, they want your respect back. Your respect is really important to them. If a red doesn't respect you, they really don't care if you respect them back or not. So if you're working on a team in Rotary and you've got this red over here and they're, they're not getting along with this other person, they're clashing, it's because they, they don't respect that other person Again, reds aren't always thinking about people as much as they are loyal to the project or, or the task at hand. So finding a person who has earned the respect of that red to go have a conversation with the red and say, you know, you might have been a little bit hard on this person over here. And they, they, they felt steamrolled, okay? So if that comes from a person who the red respects, they will take it so much better um, than a person where, where they don't have as much respect and the person who they're clashing with might not be able to get through to the red um, so, so much as, as someone they respect. They want to hide their insecurities tightly. Now this doesn't mean that they're gonna lie or that they're not gonna own up to their mistakes. It just means that they're not gonna come out right away and tell you the mistake. What they're probably gonna do is just fix it. They're probably just gonna fix that mistake, okay? So they've, they've made a mistake or something wasn't right technically. They're, they're gonna fix it and you may or may not ever know that it happened. They're just not gonna come spilling it out saying, oh, you're never gonna believe what I did, I messed this up. No, that's not how they are. They're not gonna come to you like that. 
they want to be productive, they want to be in a leadership position, and they want to experience a challenging adventure. Now, this doesn't mean that they're out looking for a ropes course and doing, you know, skydiving every weekend. It means that they want what they're doing to be challenging for them. If it's a new project, they're going to be the first ones to sign up for it. If it's a different way of doing something that we've always done a certain way, they're going to be the first one standing behind that to say, let's try it this way. Okay, so they're going to get really involved in the challenge of doing something new and doing something different. So, so there is a caution for reds that sometimes when, when the challenge is over, sometimes they might, might want to abandon the project. So those of us who are working with a red, those of us who, who know reds, we, we might want to just be there for when the challenge is done, reds are gonna move on to the next challenge. And that's good because we need people in our clubs who are like that. But what it means is that the project that was started over here, other people are gonna to have to finish that project out to its, to its conclusion. So, so you, you might not expect your reds to have as much excitement and enthusiasm once the challenge is over. And then here's a few keys to relating to reds. In communication, be direct, be specific. If you have facts, figures, or statistics, use them. And if you need to bring feelings into the conversation, um, just be cognizant of, of doing that. <laughs> you, might, you might not want to start a conversation with a red to say, well, I just don't really feel like this is the right way. All right, you're gonna need something more concrete to really have that conversation with, with a red. So if you're gonna say, I don't really feel like this is the right way, and you have a because one, two, and three, then that's okay. But, but if you're just basing something on a feeling, you are probably not gonna get very far with the person who's a red because they're gonna be looking for something more tangible. When you're corresponding with reds via email, um, you can get straight to the point. You know, you don't need that um, fluff that we sometimes try to fill, you know, the first <laughs> paragraph of an email. They might not even get down to where you really need them to read if you fill too much fluff on the top. In fact, when you're communicating in writing um, or even verbally, use, use like bulleted points. So if, if you want to get um, a, your message across to a red and you can um, put that in writing and use bullets, they will very, very likely um, respond better to that. So be direct, be specific, be brief if you can. Uh, remember when you're relating with reds, they are not trying to steamroll you. And, and remember when you're relating to a red, don't take it personally. They are um, very likely to just get caught up in their vision and they have this, um, this really, uh, this drive, this strong drive to see their vision come to fruition. Um, so, so those are some tips on, on relating to the reds. Before we move on to the blues, and, and I know I'm going through this quickly, I, I just want to say that all reds are not created equally and everybody has a secondary color. So the test that you took is only giving you your primary color somebody who's a red and who has a really strong blue underneath their red, they might act a little bit differently than somebody who's a red and has a really strong white underneath their red. So not all reds are created equally. Um, this is very general information, but for the most part, when I'm going through the color code, um, 
people find this to be spot on. So, so the red has a strong loyalty to the task and the project at hand, and, and they want to go make sure that project is challenging and they'll do a really great job. We need reds in leadership of our clubs. We need reds in leadership of our committees. Uh, we need reds in leadership of our projects. So if you ever do this assessment with your club, um, find out who those reds are and make sure you're utilizing them to their um, top capacity. All right, let's see, are there any questions or comments? Um, let's start from the reds real quickly. We still have three more colors to get through. Would any reds care to comment? I see Chuck Sawicki's in a red shirt. Una? Yes. This is Hector. I just uh, made me reflect the sentence that I read in the analysis when it says, red prefer to be respected than love it. And that hit me and, and made me think, but at, at the end, I think it's true. They prefer respect than love. Absolutely, and, and to earn the respect of a red is, is key. If you are interacting with reds in your club and you have earned their respect, you wanna keep that respect, okay? You just wanna keep that respect. Any comments from the reds? Any um, observations on being a red? Charity, are you a red? I am, and um, I, I felt as though the statements about reds being, and I interpret it as task oriented, um, is very true in my case, because uh, I can recall over the years in my work experiences, um, I've always been the person in the office who doesn't want to stop for social activities and chit chatting. Um, and so this is really hitting home with me mm -hmm. to help me to understand that part of my personality. Good, thank you. And it's for everyone else to understand that just because the Reds don't want to stop and chit chat, it doesn't mean they don't like you. No, it, it doesn't. They <laughs> are so um, dedicated to this task. Yeah. And they're like on fire for this task. They just want to get it done. And, and it's okay. It's who they mm -hmm. are. Don't take it personally. It's who they are. I think after a while, um, people understand and just accept it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the reds when you can get them away from their tasks. <laughs> plan an outing or plan an event where there are no responsibilities mm -hmm. and enjoy the reds at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always wondered why I was so selfish. And, and 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 could you go into that a little bit? Well, you know, I think selfishness is a limitation of the Reds. Um, it's because they believe they're right. It's natural. They're born that way. They believe that they are right. And so I think there can become a tendency to be self-focused when you think, you know, your ideas are the right ideas. So, so for reds to understand that they have that tendency, it's just something they have to work on more. It doesn't mean reds have to be selfish. It means they have to work on being not selfish, maybe more than, than some of the other colors have to work at it. So you can't look at every red and say, oh, that's a selfish person. Um, if you are coming across a red who is not selfish, you know that they they have worked very hard to overcome that characteristic. And Paul, John Cram, oh, Juliet is saying that she doesn't see you as selfish. You are serving others. So, <laughs> but it is good to be aware that we might have these natural tendencies more than others. And so we have to focus on not being selfish, for example. Thank you, Paul.
All right, I'm going to move on to blues. Patrick, I see your hand raised. Do you have a question? Yeah, I think it's important that uh, what you said that there could be a strong secondary color as well. So th this is these aren't just your total red, your total yellow, your total. I mean, you're made up of combinations of these. So you could be someone who's looking at this red going like, wow, that's that's not me, you know, or totally me. It's because you have another driver as well in it. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll caveat that statement to say your driving core color is always your driving core color, but some of the other um, parts do tend to soften here or strengthen over here. So absolutely, and, and there are no two reds alike again. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, I'm gonna move on to blue. And Dr. Hartman says, life cannot bestow on anyone a more gratifying reward than the sincere appreciation and trust of a blue friend, employer, or family member. This is where you get the expression true blue. Dr blues are motivated by intimacy, which means connections. They want to connect with other people. They want to connect with other people on a very personal level and they thrive on those connections. They also thrive on quality and service. Probably there's a lot of Rotarians who are blue. They're drawn to this organization for the service component. Blue strengths, they have a very, very high care quotient. They care a lot about people. Where reds are more loyal to the task, Blues are more loyal to the people performing and working on that task. Blues are sincere, they're intuitive, they're loyal, and they are thoughtful. For the most part, blues are the ones who are going to remember um, birthdays. They're, they're going to go out of their effort to you know, wish you a happy anniversary or wish you a, a happy birthday, whatever the case may be. When, when you are in the um, friendship of a blue, you will have their loyalty um, for, for life. And, and the more loyal you are to the blue, the more loyal they're gonna be back to you. So blues can be really friends for life. It might not be with a lot of friends, but they will have a small group of friends for life. Blues can seem self-righteous. They can be overly sensitive, prone to perfectionism, prone to worry and prone to unrealistic expectations. And, and here's why. Because blues care so much, they're going to go to the ends of the earth for you. The, you know that song, I would walk 10,000 miles and I would walk 10,000 more. <laughs> they're they're going to walk for you or 5,000 miles, but they're going to go to the ends of the earth for you. They're going to be the ones who stay late at work to complete a project. They're gonna be the ones who might be the first ones there in the morning and might be the last ones to leave because they're so dedicated to, to doing a good job. And if you're not doing the same thing, they can become self-righteous. They can say, well, I stayed till 10 o'clock last night, you left at five. You know, so, so that can happen in Rotary a lot because we see those people we see those people who seem to never you know, give up on a task. They seem to always be working on that task. And, and sometimes, sometimes that perfectionism kicks in blues. Let me say there is no such thing as perfect. And so blues keep wanting to try and make it better and make it better and make it better. And reds are saying, look, the deadline was last night. It's done, and and but blues think their quality has to be off the charts, and so they're striving for perfection. It's it's good being the enemy of of great being the enemy of good. Um, so blues need to understand when to accept the job for what it is and to then move on. So those unrealistic expectations that all kind of ties in. Um, to their, their high quality standard. Blues need to be good morally, okay? Like the reds need to be good technically, 
Blues need to be good morally. They need to do the right thing. They are very justice oriented. They want to do the right thing and they want you to do the right thing. That's another reason why one of their limitations is to be judgmental. Because if you're not doing the right thing by their standard, they can get into judgment. And, and as blues, staying out of judgment can be harder than in some of the other colors. They need to be understood, to be appreciated, and to be accepted. Blues can be appreciated in, in the most um, sincere and small way. You don't have to go to great extents to, to show your appreciation to a blue, just letting them know, hey, I, I noticed what you did and, and I really appreciate that. And hey, you went the extra mile and, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's good enough for a blue. They don't, they don't need the big fanfare. They want to reveal their insecurities to you, whereas the reds will hide their insecurities a little bit tighter. Blues are going to be like, oh, you're not going to believe what I just did. I'm such a dummy. And, you know, they're going to they're going to say that to you because it's human and they're going to think that they can connect with you on that because we all make mistakes. And, and blues, remember, thrive on intimacy and connection. So they're going to tell you what they did. They want to achieve quality, to be autonomous, and to have security. Change is not comfortable for blues. It's, it's not comfortable for a lot of us, but blues have the hardest time adapting to change. So this past year, <laughs> when everything changed, I think there were a lot of people in the blue color who had a hard time dealing with that change, and, and they came through it like champs. So, so when you are relating with blues, um, I want to talk about the loyalty first. Blues, again, I said they are loyal to you as, as long as you are loyal back to them. If you are not showing blues the same care and consideration that they're showing to you, um, if, if you're not showing the same care and quality toward a task that you're working on together, they might give you a couple, a couple strikes and then you're out. You know, they'll, they'll give you a chance, but, but they don't have this endless supply of, of chances for you to, to be their friend and to show the loyalty and to show the same level of care. Um, they, they will write you off if you hurt them or you um, are disingenuous to them, or um, if you fail them in some capacity, they, they will write you off and you won't be in their inner circle. As much as they like to connect with people, they like to connect with people who are genuine and who are real and who are loyal back to them. If you are working on a project with a blue and or you might be managing a blue, it's, it's often helpful to um, give them a deadline. You know, here's a project coming up because they can get caught in that striving for perfection and, and never getting the job done. Um, you can give them a deadline so that they know when they have to have the job done and they, they can say, okay, this is gonna be good enough. It's, it's going from here. Um, when you're working with a blue, I would always start with a positive comment first. If you're you know, talking about a project or if you're coaching them at, at work, I would always start with um, the positive and, and how, you know, how well this is, but this over here still needs a little bit of work. And, and you kind of get the best reaction from them rather than coming and saying, okay, X, Y, Z needs to be fixed and I need it by tomorrow. It's, hey, you know, this project, this part of it is really outstanding. I love what you did on X, Y, and Z, but this part over here, it's not quite working. So if you could take some more time to think about that and have it back to me tomorrow, um, they, they do need more time to think and process. You're not going to get the quick decisiveness that you might get from from the reds. So um, just be, just be, just allow blues to think about it 
if if you can even give them overnight to think about something or if you know a change is coming and you can say to the blue you know you know this is one of the options that we're considering what are your thoughts on this have them think about it have them process it and then talk about it again the next day because if you just come at them with a lot of changes and a lot of different directions, and if you just come at them looking for them to um, respond right away, you're not going to get the best out of them. And remember, that's what this is all about, getting the best out of the people on our team. So, so give them time to think and process, especially for reds, because reds want those quick decisions if you're working with the blue, you're going to need to give them some time to process before they decide. And, and reds, be certain that you don't allow that to, um, for you to lose respect over the blues because they need more time to think and process. It's just who they are. They, they, can't, they are not as decisive as quickly as you. That's who they are. So any comments from the blues in particular? Real quick, we still have two more colors to go through. Um, was that a hand up, um, Patrick? Or is your hand just still up from last time? Okay. Um, Adeline? I'll say as a blue, um, I prefer being contacted via email rather than um, by phone because it gives me that extra time to process things. A lot of times, if somebody has a question for me that needs to be answered right away, I'll give you some kind of answer over the phone, but then I will follow up with an email saying, hey, I said this, but I probably should have said this. And that's good insight, Adeline. And for blues, you can always ask, when do you need the answer? You can always ask, can I give you this answer tomorrow? Cause I need to process the information or, Hey, I want to look a couple things up. So it's going to take me two hours to get back to you or whatever that, that window is. Thank you. All right. Moving on to white and Dr. Hartman says people who are driven by peace offer us all a model for gentle human dignity. People in the white driving core motivation have more clarity and tolerance than any other color. It's, it's almost as if, if, if there's a problem or a challenge on the table, the people in the white color are so observant, they just kind of see their way to that solution. Um, they are kind, they're even temper, they're objective. That's it, they have this objectivity. They don't get distracted by the politics over here or the drama over here. They can go straight to the cause, straight to the issue with a great deal of objectivity. Um, they're, they're diplomatic and they have this sense of inventiveness. They, they can um, kind of see the solutions. They're not always, and it kind of ties into their ties into their limitations. They can be indecisive, silently stubborn, seem distant, um, unexpressive, and attached. And, and it all ties in together. They can see the solution, but they don't want to rock the boat. They're driven by peace. And so they sometimes don't share what they think the solution is because if they share it, it might upset this group or it might upset this group or this person. And they don't want to upset anyone. They want inner peace. It's, it's such a, a characteristic that I admire so much because they're, they're striving for contentedness. And, and so many of us are just in full-blown action all the time that, that we don't stop and, and be content um, people in the white driving core motivation are, they need to feel that contentedness all the time. So they strive for it. If there's a conflict at a meeting and not in Rotary, right? You know, these people want to do it this way and these people want to do it this way. 
the person in the white color code, that's painful for that person. That's causing them inner turmoil and they do not like it and they will shut down and you will lose that objectivity and the clarity that they can offer because of the drama. They need to feel good inside that contentedness I mentioned. They need to be given space, they need to be respected, and they need to be accepted for who they are. They're not always conforming to the mainstream. They are often the, the people who are walking to the beat of their own drum. And that's okay, that's just who they are. So if you expect them to say, oh yeah, we're all going out to lunch, you know, hop in, that's not them. They need their space. All, the, all this activity and conversation that may be going on at a Rotary Club meeting can, can be difficult for them. So, so if they don't stay after the meeting for all the follow-up conversations, that's because they need to go decompress. It's not that they don't like you or don't want to continue hanging out with you. They just need to go decompress. So at the same time, if you've got someone in this color sitting around a table and they haven't spoken up and they haven't made a contribution to the conversation you might want to follow up with them later maybe call or via email like adeline said and just say hey what did you think about that conversation we just had you know i i never heard i never heard your input and i'd really like to hear it because their input is priceless and it often is left on the table because people don't take the time. The reds already know what's right and the, the blues are socializing over here and the whites are never heard. So they want to withhold their insecurities. They, they wanna please themselves first and then others because they need to feel contented and comfortable before they can start thinking about others. It's not a bad thing, it's just who they are. They want to be independent and to feel contented. So keys to relating to people in the white driving core motivation, again, don't put them on the spot. Um, make sure that they are comfortable before you get into asking them for their insight and opinions. If they get up and walk away from something that feels contentious, remember what what might feel contentious or not contentious to you could feel very uncomfortable for someone in this color. Just because your threshold is higher, it doesn't mean that, that they can take it. So if they get up and walk away, it's because they need the space. And, and you can follow up with them in a calm um, situation, maybe one-on-one -on -one afterwards, and then ask them, for their feedback. It's very valuable. Their feedback is critical. Um, and, and so don't lose out on getting the feedback from, from the whites. There's only 10 minutes. I'm gonna go through the yellows and then I'll hopefully save some time for questions at the end. Um, happy is as happy does. <laughs> Dr. Hartman says yellow people love themselves because they know exactly what they love to do and always find some time to do it. Yellows are driven by fun and their natural talents are enthusiasm and optimism. If you don't think that these are talents, um, imagine the past year if we didn't have enthusiasm and optimism. Having, having someone on the team at your Rotary Club who is the cheerleader, who lifts other people's spirits, who brings the energy up, who welcomes people, um, we need yellows in our clubs and, and on our teams, as, as a matter of fact. Yellows are happy, they're sociable, spontaneous, charismatic, and inclusive. Where I talked about the reds, are prone to only respecting people, only listening to people that they respect. Blues keep a very, very loyal tribe. White color, um, they'd probably rather be by themselves. <laughs> as far as yellows go, it's 
y'all come, you know, it's come one, come all. You can, um, you can strike out with a yellow three, four times. They're going to keep giving you another chance because yellows are optimistic and they believe that this person will come around sometimes to their own detriment. They will give somebody else so many chances. Yellows can be uncommitted, disorganized, afraid to face facts, unfocused and impulsive. They can be afraid to face facts because they are so optimistic and they always believe that there's a solution when things start to look difficult or when things start to look like the solution is going to be really, really hard. That's hard for a yellow because they're, they're so much focused on um, solutions. If you want creative solutions, if you want brainstorming sessions that, you know, the sky is the limit, bring a yellow in on that brainstorming session and you'll get some great ideas. They need to look good socially. Remember, reds need to look good technically. Blues need to look good morally. Whites need to feel good. Yellows need to look good socially. They need to be noticed, to be praised, and to receive approval from the masses. We talked about thanking blues in a very um, intimate, even a private way. Blues love to be appreciated. The yellows don't mind the fanfare. You can't really embarrass a yellow very easily. So if you have the, um, the fanfare with that approval, that's okay with the yellows. They'll hide their insecurities loosely. They might make those same mistakes too, but um, they're always gonna say, oh yeah, that was not a big deal. Uh, we, we're already past that. <laughs> you know, they're gonna kind of um, glaze over things sometimes. They want to achieve happiness and they want to be free and enjoy playful adventure. This doesn't mean that life is a playground. Like the reds want the challenging adventure the yellows want the playful adventure. So they want to have fun. If it's at work and it's a hard project, they're gonna bring something in to lighten the mood. Maybe they're the ones who bring in the donuts on a Friday morning. So it just kind of brings an element of fun to whatever you're doing. Keys to relating to a yellow is to keep it upbeat, keep it on the positive, um, don't give them too many restrictions uh, of their creativity or else, or else they'll, they'll shut down. They'll just stop being creative altogether. And, you know, there's nothing worse than a sad yellow, <laughs> you know, so, so give them that freedom, that creativity and, and try to keep it upbeat and positive when you're, when you're with yellows. It's not very hard to do because they're going to keep it upbeat and positive for you. So this is kind of how the colors um, interact with one another. Reds and blues both want control, okay? They're both in the position that they want the control. Red will control from a logical point of view and blue will control from an emotional point of view. So when you've got a red and a blue who are both controlling in a, in a different sense, find two things that they can, they can control. Maybe the red does this on a project and the blue does, does this on a project. Or if you have two reds, give them each a different project to lead. If, if you've got too many reds on a committee, um, you know, they're all gonna be vying for control and, and they're probably gonna clash. So give them things to do. Maybe there's subcommittees within a committee and there's a chair of this and the chair of this and the chair of that. Yellows and whites are both in a non-controlling position. They're perfectly fine not to be the ones in control. It doesn't mean that they can't be. It means they don't need to be and they're perfectly fine not being. Yellows are in the emotional sphere with the blues. So yellows and blues can relate to one another very well because they're speaking the same language. Yellows are not necessarily need to be in control and blues prefer to be in control. So they get along well. Whites are in 
the logical sphere the same as reds. So reds and whites often are speaking the same language. They can often understand each other very well because they're talking in that, that logical sphere and that logical position. Reds want the control and whites don't, so that's okay. These are just some graphics on some do's and don'ts. Um, with blues, if you wanna have the best relationship with those blues, be sincere, show appreciation, be loyal, and allow time for them to collect thoughts. I mentioned all those things. Don't make a blue feel guilty. And I'll tell you something, blues are harder on themselves than anyone else could ever be. If a blues make a mistake, um, you, you, almost, you almost don't wanna say anything because they're over here beating themselves up for it. So you don't need to pack it on, you know, you can acknowledge it, but you don't need to make them feel guilty for that mistake. They already feel bad enough. For best relationships with reds, present issues logically, like I mentioned, use specifics, use bullet points, um, use facts and figures if you can, support their decisiveness. We need people who can make quick decisions in our club, so give reds that opportunity to go be decisive, respect them. And, and when you verbalize your feelings, remember to think of that why. You know, I feel this way because, and then give them some, some whys behind that. With whites, be patient, um, accept their individuality, allow them some alone time, um, be logical. Again, they are in that language of, of logic. Um, you cannot demand their leadership. Whites can still be good leaders. Remember, everyone can rise to the occasion. They're just not as naturally inclined to do so. They just have to work a little bit harder. So you can't force it on them, but if they want it and can rise to it, they can be very, very good at it. Um, don't expect them to be the, the life of the party. They might be the one that that cracks you up in a, in a more dry, witty way than, than the life of the party. And with yellows, um, expect them to be a little bit playful and to joke a little bit. Um, they're gonna be charismatic. They're gonna be very social. Even though they're, they are all these things, they still feel very deeply. You can't think of yellows as, as shallow. They have deep feelings just as much as anyone else. Um, again, about the creativity, don't forget their creativity. Don't think they're lightweight. Don't criticize them too seriously. Um, just as we close up as a reminder, um, no personality is better, more valuable, or more important than any of the other personalities. I just want to end the same way that we started, and that's to say that Every color has its strengths. Every color has its um, limitations. And you cannot, um, you cannot expect one color to um, be in any certain job or any certain role. Every color can do those roles. They're just gonna do it a little bit differently. Now that you have a little bit uh, more of a key um, to understanding the people around you, you can use this information to have the best relationships. It's not information that can arm you to say, oh, I know you did it that way because you are red, or I know you did it that way because you are blue. It's, it's for you to understand, huh, that makes sense. Now I know why she did it that way. And, and then once you know the why, then you can have that conversation um, and, and understanding. Remember, self-awareness and, and understanding and empathy were the keys to, to the color code. I know I went through it really, really quickly. Sometimes when I'm doing the color code with groups and organizations, we're doing it for a half a day and, and we kind of build in some other activities with it. If, if any of you are interested in 
doing more with the color code, you're free to reach out to me and I can talk to you more about it. But I, I hope it was helpful in this short amount of time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to be in touch. <laughs> and, and look to uh, the district website for more information on district development for, for the future. I'll, I'll hang on for another few minutes if anyone else wants to hang on, but officially I wanna make sure we adjourn because it's seven o'clock. So John Cram, yes, sir. Could you compare this to Myers-Briggs? I'm not an expert in Myers-Briggs and I'm not trained in Myers-Briggs. I've done the Myers-Briggs. Um, the Myers-Briggs is more about behaviors and behaviors change. You know, if you're, you, you, can, you can work on those behaviors. On your driving core motivation, you can't work on it to change it. It just is. I don't know if that's a good answer, but like, like I said, most of the personality assessments are, are dealing in behavioral things and the color code is dealing in something that's innate, something that is how you are born. Does that help at all? It does, thank you. Sure. Luna, Charity has her hand up. Go ahead, Charity. Oh, you're on mute, Charity. I'm sorry, I meant to take that down. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Oh, um, Mary, is that a question or just a hand? Go ahead. And unmute. Um, <clears throat> to me, it kind of comes back to a nature versus nurture setup. Um, you know, having studied that years ago, they always talked about your nature is just the innate stuff and usually it's when you're under pressure that that comes out you can rise above it you can move past it but if you're going to be under pressure or some you know you're stressed in some way that's when the nature will come out yeah i think that's a great analogy thank you any other questions comments <clears throat> 